Joanne, you might ask yourself, what is Al doing walking into an apartment building? Well, I'm going to a farm on the sixth floor. From street level, the Pike and Rose development in North Bethesda looks like just another city block. But give yourself the right vantage point and... Holy mackerel, would you look at this? Whoa. Welcome to the farm at Pike and Rose. It's a lot of ground up here. One of six rooftop farms developed and maintained by DC-based company Uptop Acres. There's 20 floors in the residential building. We're on the sixth floor in the courtyard area. So this farm is about a third of an acre in size, the largest in the mid-Atlantic for rooftop space. And we're growing vegetables mostly up here, okra, eggplant, tomatoes, peppers. We've had kale and cabbage and kind of you name it up here. Sarah Servan is the farm manager here at Pike and Rose, which is currently in its first season of production. This time last year was just a green roof. Translation. A green roof is designed to capture rainwater. So instead of having just a flat cement roof on top of a building, these green roofs are, are living roofs. In Montgomery County, green roofs are a requirement for all new building infrastructure above a certain square footage. They tend to have succulents and grasses, and we take those grasses out and, and put in vegetables instead. I met up with Sarah to learn a little bit about how these veggies fare in their unconventional home. Well, you have some beautiful peppers here. What, what variety is this? These are Carmen red bell peppers. They're sweet, tasty. And they do well in this soil because it is so different than anything I've ever seen. There, there is dirt in it, but there's a lot of gravel, a lot of crushed brick. What's the theory behind that? Green roofs are designed to have better drainage and that's why they have, we have this rocky, sandy soil. It'll move water out very quickly. What are the benefits of, of doing green roof gardening? Stormwater management is the primary reason for them being put in. And then apart from that, you're cooling the building, capturing carbon dioxide, and reducing the amount of mileage that your food's traveling. So we like to say our food's traveling in flights of stairs. No kidding. Most of the farm's produce is sold as a weekly farm share, often to residents of this very building. As for the rest, we also sell to City Perch, which is a restaurant right down the stairs. They buy a good amount of vegetables from us. Chef Tim, this is one of the most beautiful presentations I've ever seen. So colorful. And you might say it's just a little bit local, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's from 40 feet up on our very roof. <laughs> I've been there. Amazing. Tell me about the fish. It's just beautiful. This is our pan-seared Maryland rockfish, and it's served over a medley of local roasted peppers, roasted bell, shishito, and yellow sweet peppers. And you made a sauce from each of them? Yes, we did. Look at the colors. These are beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Are these easy to make? They do take a little bit of time, but it's definitely worth the effort. Cooking down peppers, onions with a little bit of wine, then pureeing them to get that very nice, smooth, velvety texture. Oh, it's wonderful. Well, we're going to put the recipe on the website so you can try it at home. For The Local Buy, I'm Al Spoler. Joanne? Thanks, Al. And for you at home, visit us at www.mpt.org slash farm for all our Local Buy recipes. And if you want to look behind the scenes, don't forget to check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.